Hello everybody, welcome back to another color grading tutorial from Whitespace Films. My name is Tim Johnson and today what we're going to be doing is attacking this video clip here. Uh, I'll play it for you. It's a slow motion clip of Maid of Honor at this wedding that I shot uh, reading part of her speech coming up. Could be kind of a neat little bit of b-roll to put over her actual speech um, or kind of mix in with the rest of their story. But the thing is, there's all this daylight, as you can see, there's these big windows here, and because my white balance was set to tungsten, it's basically balanced for this area in here, which is lit by these tungsten bulbs, but the daylight pouring in, I'm sure you've run into this, it looks really blue. And so I think the shot is kind of ugly, but I want to see if we could salvage it. And turns out, we can. So here we go. We have our first node here. I'm just going to start by labeling this as color fix. So this, this node and what we're going to do in it is actually going to take care of a lot of our problems right off the bat. So if we go down here to our Curves tab, by default you'll see this thing here, which is just a normal uh, curve to do kind of whatever you want. But there's many other different kinds of curves that you can use. And right now we're going to use this one, which is called Hue versus Saturation. And you have all these different colors going from kind of a red to magenta and purple here everything in between. So what we're going to do is use this to bring down the saturation of both the blue and kind of tone down the warmth here in these curtains. So there's some different little presets here that'll cover some different ranges. We're going to use the blue. You can just uh, click in here to make your own points if you want. But we're just going to use the blue because it's actually basically where we want to control it. So I'm going to grab this here and you can see where those the windows are pouring in and we got some blue light. By pulling this down, I'm reducing the saturation. I push it up and it increases it. So I pull this down and it basically pulls all of that blue out. And I think, let's see, maybe right about there would be pretty good. And um, if I go in here, make this full screen, you can see right around here, we still have some blue kind of uh, highlighting around these different objects, especially right even in here. If I disable this node by hitting Command D, it took out all the blue here, but right in this range, for some reason it's left a bunch of this blue, which looks a little bit ugly. So later on we're going to take care of that as well, but for now we've taken care of most of that uh, daylight problem. The next thing we're going to do is within, within the same curve, we're going to kind of take care of this warmth here. So I'm going to make some control points, one there, one there, one over here. And I'm just going to take this and kind of wiggle it around, pull down the saturation, and get it, maybe I'll leave a little bit of warmth in there just to make it look like it's, you know, a nice little warm incandescent bulb. So right there is pretty good. So if we disable this node and bring it back, you see we've already cleaned up the image a lot. It isn't quite black and white. If I was to take this here, saturation, and just bring it down to zero, you'll see that it looks, it looks like black and white. It's way different. If I reset this, you see we still have some color in the image. So we're actually doing pretty good. So now the next thing we're going to do is add a serial node by hitting Option or Alt S and we're going to call this VIG for vignette. That's what I like to call it. I'm going to go over here to our power windows, make a circular one, and actually we're going to kind of stretch this out like this to kind of center it on her. We're going to soften it, whoops, we're going to soften it a ton like that. I'm going to click off of that so we can just see her without that thing in the way. So we're going to be affecting the area inside that mask. We're going to go down to our primary wheels, take it, and just kind of drag the highlights up. And it kind of, it's blowing out those chairs back there, but for now that's okay. What we're worried about, I'm going to hit uh, Option F to bring this up and make it a little bit bigger. We're going to make this brighter, bring up maybe the mid-tones a bit, because that's where her skin and her clothes are a lot. And we'll bring down the shadows here, give a little bit of contrast to her. She's looking pretty good, but as we mentioned before, all these chairs now look totally blown out, which looks not that great. So we'll change this. Within the same node, we change what we're modifying from primary wheels to log. And now we can very much, uh, much more specifically, adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights. And if you look at this graph right here, this is from the uh, DaVinci Resolve manual. This is a comparison of what's covered by shadows, midtones, and highlights, and what's covered by the primary wheels. And you see in the primary wheels, there's way more overlap. Uh, the highlights affect like 100% of the pure white things, tapering down to basically 0% of the shadows. But it still covers stuff throughout like the whole range of the image, just to varying degrees. 
looking at the log adjustments, they're much more specific as to where they cover. They don't overlap very much. So if we come back here to our DaVinci Resolve window, you can see if I'm in the Log tab here, so not primary wheels but log, I can go to the highlights here and click and drag down here. And I'm still just affecting the things within the, the uh, power window that I drew earlier. I click and drag this down. You can see it's pulling down those highlights that I had pushed up before in my primaries wheel uh, window. So I use the log to pull that back down and get this detail back. So I've brightened her up and I've still gotten the detail back here. So I hit option F to bring back this view. And now the next thing we're going to do is right click, add an outside node. And I'm just going to label this real quick as outside. And so now I'm just going to affect the things outside of the power window that I drew earlier. So what I want to do is go back to primary wheels, click, I'm going to bring down the midtones a little bit, the highlights a little bit to bring some more focus to her, and the shadows just a little bit to give it some more contrast. And now that I see it like that, I might go back here into our our main power window adjustment and brighten that up just a little bit more here. All right, so now what we're going to do, looking at her in comparison to everything else, I feel like her skin could maybe be made a little bit brighter and also um, it just seems a little bit too red. So we're going to do option S, go right here, I'm going to call this skin. Her skin was totally fine in real life, but in this image it looks a little bit red. So we're going to go in here, hit option F again, take my eyedropper tool, make sure that's actually going in there. And I'm just going to click and drag around her skin here, get a little sample. Hit Shift H to see what I've done. I'm going to change that back to my arrow. All right, so now I just kind of make some adjustments here, maybe adjust the width a little bit. Nope, I want to make sure we have her, her skin completely. There we go. Uh, luminance, I know that her shirt is a little bit brighter, so we're going to pull that back a little bit. The saturation, we're going to remove some of the lower saturation things a little bit. All right, let's see. Does this help if I move it around? Maybe just a touch. All right, so we're going to blur it now a little bit. We're going to clean things up a little bit. There we go. Clean the black. Get rid of some of that stuff. All right, so we've cleaned the white a little bit. And what we're going to do, you can see we have this kind of halo around. It's kind of extended the mask a little bit beyond just your skin. So we can use this down here in out ratio and pull that back kind of tight against your skin. We'll blur it a bit more. Great. All right, so now what we can do is just kind of adjust her skin and give it the kind of color and tone that we want. I don't really want it green. I feel like something right in there might be pretty good. I might take the saturation down just a bit to kind of match everything else. Okay, so one of the last adjustments we're going to make, we're going to add another serial node. I'm going to call this final adjustment. So we're just going to go in and add a little bit more contrast overall. We've already made our more specific adjustments. Bring down some of the blacks here. and We can go back to our log. And because we're affecting such a small amount of the range, we can bring down and kind of control our blacks a little bit more. So maybe I don't want it quite that dark. Something like that, maybe. Go back here. I feel like she's still just a little bit dim. Oh, that's what I can do. Go to my skin, primaries, wheels. I'm going to take this and just kind of brighten up her skin a little bit. Just a bit like that. Let's see, what do we got? I think that's pretty good. Let's see it in motion. All right. And now the last thing we're going to do, we're going to have one more node, call this desaturate. And we're going to go over here to our curves, and we're going to use one more of these, which I love to use. It's the Luma versus saturation. So this is the, the range of brightness, dark to light. And there's some presets here as well, one to kind of control the shadows, one to control the highlights. You click those on and then grab the outsides of these and pull them down. And you're pushing them up will saturate them more, pulling them down will desaturate them. And remember how we had this blue banding in here? Let me see if I can make this full screen. If I was to deactivate this node, you see we have the blue back in here, because this kind of lives in the highlights. If I turn my node back on, the desaturation that I just did, we're able to pull that out and clean it up really, really nice. Let's go back here. We can see, play that. I feel like I made her skin look kind of weird. 
All right, so let's take that, pull the saturation down just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. So if we go back and look at the clip again before we did any adjustments, you can see once again the, the mixed lighting and it looks kind of gross and she's really dark compared to back here. Um, but after our adjustments, it cleaned it up really nice. It made it totally usable. And what's great is it doesn't just feel like a black and white shot. You still have color like in her shirt and in her face and the walls. Um, it's just, it's less gross. So I feel really comfortable where this shot ended up. I would totally feel free using this shot in a wedding video. And actually I probably will. Um, and what's great is talking through all these adjustments took a little while, but when I first did this adjustment, it took about five minutes. So it wouldn't be that hard to kind of copy the idea or even this exact grade. If I right click here and hit grab still, I can take this look and apply it to any other shot and have all these different nodes be there and it's just a really quick way to do it. Or if I want, I can go in here and hit display node graph. I right click on there and I can see this whole node structure in here and I could just click and drag. You know, I want, I just want this piece of it. You know, I might not want the vignette, but maybe I want the color adjustment. I can click and drag that in to anywhere in my node structure and have it be applied. So it's really easy to copy this to other shots if you wanted to. Uh, so it doesn't have to be this long, kind of cumbersome process of grading one shot and making that one right. You can actually move fairly quickly and do a bunch of different shots. So that's all I got for you. I hope you learned something useful and that you enjoyed the tutorial. And I will see you back next time.